Uh-oh. Looks like things are off to a bad start. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to a new The Oregon Trail. Well, this game ain't new. It came out in 1971, I believe, for educational purposes in Minnesota, and eventually became a classic outside the classroom, with many of you probably playing some of the other games outside of school on PC. I remember a second version of this game, like in the mid-2000s or whatnot, or at least playing it and being around. And so now we have one of the most original classic survival games now available yet again. Apparently this was around for about a year on like the Apple Arcade, so now it's finally out on Steam, so like, you know, gamers, now we can fully recognize that this truly exists. But uh, it is certainly a more in-depth experience than I was expecting. Now this game's price is a little steep at 30 bucks, but honestly after playing it for a little while, I realized that it's not just about getting to Oregon in this game. In fact, there's five mega legs to this game, like, you know, going from each major landmark getting more difficult along the whole trip. And of course, on your first trip, being more like a roguelike game, you unlock additional characters on your run. And as you play your first run, you also unlock other content, such as the Donner Party and other very challenging survival modes in the game that kind of tell the story uh, by changing the parameters. And this is uh, basically the prologue, so we're gonna learn how to play today. And of course, there's the standard mode, but it looks like there's also maybe six other modes that also inv involve native people of the trails and allow you to go off and uh, travel along that trail as well, doing different things uh, as settlers, as native people, and of course as actual historical figures or during historical events as well. Well, we're the Greenhorns. It's March 6, 1849. Well, the year's 1849 and a trio of immigrants have become stranded on their way to independence. The very beginning of the Oregon Trail. Let's begin. Our wagon's stuck and we're low on supplies. I think my leg's broken and if we don't get help soon, we're done for. Why, looky here. Well, if it isn't a party of stranded greenhorns, my name's Moses Harris. Pleasure to be of assistance. Now, let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. Hmm, looks like you got some injuries. Who's in worse shape? Uh, who should Moses Harris examine? Well, uh, let's see. Let's take a look at Julia. I'm a carpenter. I'm usually good at repairing wagons, but my arm is broken. Should Julia be treated with medicine? I think we should reconsider. Let's take a look at David. I'm a farmer. I'm usually good at tending crops and animals, but my leg is broken. Should David be treated with medicine? You know what? I think we should take uh, the first person here, Julia and treat her, because if she's a carpenter, she can also fix the wagon, and if the wagon is fixed, then David can ride in the back. So let's go ahead and treat Julia with medicine. Yeah! Medicine can be used to restore health and help recover from illness or injuries. Ah, you're looking better already, Greenhorn. You better get that wagon moving again. Oh, thank goodness the storm is starting to subside. Well, what are you waiting for? It isn't going to fix itself, you know. Now, I've got to say this game also has some very good music. Unfortunately, it's pretty heavily DMCA'd, so for video and live stream purposes, I won't play it. But it actually is very good. The sound design here, very good. And I like the way the game appears to it. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, uh, Darkest Dungeon or any of the, um, you know, uh, king Kingdoms and whatever games. You know, the, the 2D side-scroller type games where you can build kingdoms along that line. It's good. It's, it's good quality. I like it. And it course is the Oregon Trail so the only thing we could really truly hope for is an open world experience from independence to uh, Oregon with Red Dead Redemption 2 graphics which would be ridiculous I mean that would be the coolest thing I'd ever seen the wagon looks like it's still in rough shape well it's an improvement but you should really take better care of your wagon in the future I agree where are we going anyway well we're heading to independence to be honest that's our first destination oh yeah independence the beginning of the famous Oregon Trail not far from here, and I'm heading that way myself. What do you say? You join me. We're saved. Oh, beautiful rainbow off in the distance after the storm. All right, cool. So we've got a lot of things to monitor in this game in addition to people's um, morale and stamina and food. We also have to manage, like, for example, their speed. And, of course, going back to food, how quickly uh, they travel will affect how much they should eat and also trading and buying things. Speaking of which... We're at a cooking campsite, so it might be a good idea to buy some supplies and or a meal. The pleasant scent of frying garlic and onion reaches the party long before the light of the cooking fires. Well, I'll be, if it isn't Moses Harris. 
Still saving travelers on the trail, I see. You look to be in a bad way. I'd be willing to sell you some supplies if you're interested. It's a good deal, just 30 bucks. Hmm, go ahead, Greenhorns. Saving money is only useful for you if you spend it. Oh, uh, yeah, if you live to spend it, that's true. In exchange for their money, the woman hands over some toolboxes, clothes, coffee, and a harmonica. I should teach you how to use those supplies. Let's try repairing your wagon first. Toolboxes can be used to repair wagon damage. Alright, so we can either hit I to open our inventory or the escape menu. We'll hit I in this case. Alright, and we have a description of all the items here. So a little bit of like a management simulator. Because things aren't necessarily square. You can see here with the flower, uh, there's like a little scoop out of it. So we'll have to manage all of our inventory. Bigger wagons do offer bigger space. So there is much more uh, advantage to that. And additional oxen too. So that's a good thing. Alright, let's go for the repair kits. And repair. And we have to repair the damage here, here, and here. So there's damage and exposure. Damage, of course, means that you can't put anything there. Exposure means you can, but it might be damaging the supplies because of its exposure to the elements. Much better. Now, is there anything else you want to learn about? Let's ask about clothes. Dressing in clean clothes is the best way to combat poor hygiene and protect yourself from disease. That's one of the other stats we need to worry about. So uh, the purple bar at the bottom is hygiene. The bar above that is stamina with the lightning bolt. The blue smiley face is morale. And the green heart is their health. In addition to that, our characters also have some other skills that you may have saw earlier uh, where uh, what's-her-name was a little bit more skilled at carpentry. Right, so we need to head towards independence. It'll take us about two days to get there. Go ahead and take a look first at our characters. So yeah, we also have loyalty, attitude, composure, and wit, which will help us with things like hunting and... Um, trading and bartering and haggling and things like that. Additionally, shooting, carpentry, wayfinding, and medical too. So there's a lot of things to consider. And these are undiscovered, so we won't really know what our group is good at until we try to do some of these things. Sometimes people just don't know exactly what their loyalties are until they're tested, that kind of thing. So it kind of explains why some of these st uh, stats are undiscovered or kind of hidden. All right, time to equip new clothing. Let's go ahead and put it on. Looks like Alfred and Harris. Definitely need some new clothes, for sure. All right, back we go. Anything else you want to learn about? Let's talk about coffee. Oh, yes. The nectar of the gods. Oh, there's nothing better than coffee. When you're low on stamina, remember, if you push yourself too hard, you can become exhausted. And let's open the inventory again. And let's have ourselves some coffee. Now, uh, this is for the whole party, so if we drink coffee, it'll affect everybody. David obviously has red bars because he's been wounded, so he's riding in the back of the wagon. And uh, everybody else should go up at least two, so that's good. So it affects the whole party. Very nice. Alright, anything else? How about harmonicas? A harmonica is a good way to stave off low morale. You don't want to lose all hope and become forlorn. Let's play a little harmonica. That'll affect the whole party. And, of course, the ones that are already full morale. Can't get any more morale that way. All right, those are the basics of some of those stats, so let's keep on trucking. Ah, oh, you look to be in much better shape now. Glad I could help. You're welcome to stay a while if you'd like to rest. The woman invites the group to join them for a meal. Don't mind if I do, man. The party accompanied by their other travelers share a delicious meal and tales of adventure. The food fills the party with vitality and fortifies them for the journey ahead. Now, in addition to having a meal, if we come across another cook site in the future on our travels on the trail, we can also choose to tell stories and tales. And by doing that, we will discover some of those undiscovered skills of the other people in our party so we can find out who's a crack shot and who's a very good carpenter. And that, of course, is going to be a real big bonus when it comes time to staving off starvation and crossing rivers. Oh, yes, the good old river crossings of fording the river or going across the river floating as the night draws on the other party retires for the evening and the Har and harris explains how to survive on the trail well we best set out first light i know some spots nearby that are perfect for hunting oh yeah we're gonna do some hunting harris shows the green horns his map and together they plan a route for the day ahead all right let's go south uh, there are deer in the north there are coyote you can click on those of course to tell the difference and also, pelts are incredibly important in this game, too, especially for river crossings to plug the gaps in your wagon and keep everything dry. 
Okay, let's go. So not only do we get food, but also we can trade pelts too. But the best thing that I've found so far to trade has been fish on my first run. Farewell! Alright, looks like David's broken leg will be back to normal in about a day. Maybe he just had a pretty bad sprain. Who knows? 28 miles to go. So your characters, your uh, companions will tell tales and uh, all sorts of different little funny puns on the way. We can click on these animals here and get XP. There's a lot of different things to do, too, in this game for, uh, like, little achievements. There's, like, a, an entire massive amount. You don't just catch fish in the game. You can find different types of variety of fish. So upon your runs, you can find more and more of them. And also you can click on animals on screen like that to kind of, like, document them. And uh, it's just more fun to actually be able to, like, pay attention. You don't have to do it. There's no reason uh, to do it. Like, you don't get a bonus for it. But you also don't get, like, punished for not doing it either. So it's just kind of, you do it your leisure whenever you play. Not all wildlife is for hunting. An experienced traveler can recognize all the different animals of the trail. Uh, tap animals to record them in your journal to earn XP. You can also enable automatically collect animals in the accessibility, accessibility settings menu. Right. You can do that at any time. Uh, you do earn XP, which will unlock other things, so I guess I was wrong about that. But it doesn't help your, your party in the current adventure. It's not like you'll be able to trade something extra or whatnot. It just unlocks other game content. So the more you play, the more you win. And like they said, if you don't want to do that, just turn the auto-collect on and someone will, like, record that the animal exists. Uh-oh. Circle the wagons, boys. We got trouble. The party comes across an abandoned wagon accompanied by a lonely ox and surrounded by scattered supplies. Oh, looks like something bad happened here. You should take what you need to survive, or else you might meet the same fate. You could probably take one of the wheels if you're confident in your carpentry skills. Better to have spare parts in case of accidents. Who should attempt to retrieve a spare wagon wheel? Well, we know Julia's our best carpenter, so that'd be the best option. And there she goes. Julia's skill as a carpenter helps her to retrieve the spare wagon wheel without any difficulty. Good job. You'll come across all sorts of situations as you travel. How you choose to deal with them is up to you. But remember that your actions have consequences. I can't believe how Oregon Trail, going back to like the Apple II and playing it on floppy disks, really, truly was like the first survival game that prepared me for games like Frostpunk with random events and having to store food and things like that. Can't believe it. I can't believe it. I honestly didn't think we would see another one of these games, too, to li licensing issues, or it just seemed too simple overall, but this game at least has added some things to make it a little bit more complicated and interesting. Uh-oh. Is he robbing us? No. There are animal tracks on the trail ahead. Stay close and stay quiet. All right. There better not be bears. Oh, dear. Huh. Hunting requires someone who is good at shooting and has plenty of stamina, so make sure you send the right person. Yeah, so Alfred will probably be our good call here. Unfortunately, we can't click on these deer. I guess it's just to show that they're nearby. Take this old hunting coat and get dressed. I'll even let you borrow my rifle and some ammunition. Harris hands Alfred some bullets. Bullets are required to hunt. And bait is also required for fishing, too, and that's a whole other thing you can do, of course. A little worn out, but you look great. It brings back some fond memories. Remember, you can only carry as much meat as your stamina allows, so hunt only what you need. We can also equip traps in this game, and also fishing, uh, fishing traps and animal traps, so we can get extra meat or extra fish after hunting or fishing. All right, WSD to move, space, or left-click to shoot. This will be a little tricky, but... It's interesting shooting this rifle, for sure. Since we kind of have to shoot at angles if we need to. Alright, we got one deer. Two down. Oh, we got a buffalo. I thought he was going to get away. Alright, four, not bad. Oh, buffalo take two shots, so let's try to uh, avoid them unless they go to the middle of the screen. Hundred and twenty pounds of deer. Probably only able to carry about seventy, maybe. Maybe eighty. After a successful hunt, Alfred carries hundred and twenty pounds of meat back to storage. Wow. 
After a hunt, it's always worth taking the time to skin your game properly. Lots of folks will pay top dollar for pelts. The fur trade is a big industry. Take it from me. He is not wrong about that. Very critical. Pelts can be sold for money or used to protect your wagon when crossing rivers. You've got plenty of meat, so now's a good time to increase your rations. The size of your party's rations can be changed at any time using the map. We're going to go from meager to filling. And we can also increase our speed if we want to, but I think we'll just kind of keep on trucking. So yeah, you can speed up or slow down and increase food, which I think lowers the stamina debuff. Oh, never mind. Harris just vomited on the ground. I think I've come down with some kind of illness. I heard there's been an outbreak of cholera recently. Gave you my last bottle of medicine, but I still have some herbal remedy that I make from local plants. Medicine and herbal remedies can be used on the party screen to recover health and treat illness or injuries. All right, let's go to our party menu. He's going to have cholera for seven days. Go ahead and see if we can use something for him. There's our herbal remedy, and Harris, at least that'll lower the time, so from seven to six. So if we continuously give him, if we add more, we could continuously give him uh, the herbal remedy, and that might cure it faster. I really ought to see a doctor. We should hurry to independence as soon as possible. Illnesses and injuries can be cured by visiting a physician at major settlements. <clears throat> Your party's walking pace can be changed at any time using the map. Right, so we can settle in for the night at like a tavern or whatnot at independence, like major cities or settlements, or even forts. So that's a good way to be able to speed things up a little bit. Oh, we're going to go at a grueling pace now, doubling down on our use of uh, stamina. All right, we got morale. We've got an objective. We're heading out. 139 pounds of meat at a grueling pace, but we're eating some big old meals, so that's good. Six miles to go. So once we arrive at the town, that's where the game really begins with the ability to pick our own wagon and the ability to buy supplies and also pick a whole different group of settlers or travelers or whatever you want to call them. And, uh, of course, there are a little bit of, like, preset characters, but you can name them yourself and more unlock over time, as I mentioned uh, if you play, you start with, like, bankers and uh, carpenters and farmers, and then eventually unlock physicians, which, of course, in the Oregon Trail would be absolutely indispensable. All right, Matt's general story. Here we are. Well, here it is, Independence. This is where the Oregon Trail really begins. You can stock up on supplies at Matt's general store and draft your own party of adventurers at the saloon. You learned a lot since I first met you. Keep your chins up and think of that promising future that awaits you when you reach Oregon. I'll see you around, Greenhorns. Harris bids the party farewell, disappears into the crowd. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Come on, old horse. Oh, yeah, he had that horse with him the whole time. Farewell. And there we are. We've unlocked the theater and the... General store. Journey complete. Congratulations. Your party made it to Independence. This is the very beginning of the Oregon Trail. Many more immigrants like them will brave the trail in the years to come. Dreaming of a new life in the Willamette or Willamette Valley. But how many will succeed? We've unlocked the guidebook. Begin your journey. All right, so now's where we can actually kind of pick what we want to do. There will be more options later in the game, but there's kind of a relaxing way to find all the animals in the game and click on everything if you missed it. Kind of a cool way to kind of just figure out how to play and pay, play at your own pace with tons of supplies. And then there's, of course, the Oregon Trail, the main game, and then Oregon or Bust, which is kind of like a more challenging uh, way to play the Oregon Trail, like this base uh, get to Oregon type goal. Now, the next thing, too, is that there'll be other smaller scenarios unlocked that are kind of medium and large size, and one small size, too. So there's much, much more to do. John Half Moon. Your first a journey begins in Independence. Reach a fort to unlock. Uh, it is a fast travel location. Once unlocked, you can hire a guide to take you straight there on your next attempt to reach Oregon. Yeah, so that makes this kind of like a roguelike game. So there are five legs along the uh, whole route, so... Um, as you can see there, we got to get all the way to Oregon by going through five sections. Each of them have a fort at the end, 
And so at that fort, we kind of unlock like a fast travel point. So if our party dies immediately after the fort, we can then kind of fast travel with another party and skip the first leg if you want to. Otherwise, you can go through the full journey of 2,000 miles. Take a journey across 2,000 miles of plains, rivers, and mountains. Uh, if for some reason you don't survive your wagon burns or thieves steal your oxen or you run out of provisions or die to death of cholera, <laughs> don't give up. Try again and again and again. Yeah, I, I actually didn't even really think of Oregon Trail as a survival game or a roguelike game at all. Like, just almost feels like a dungeon crawler, except, you know, we're crawling through a massive amount of uh, U.S. territory. All right, so we have to choose one of three people here. And then as we uh, pick each of them, we will pick up to four people. So I believe in total we're presented with different people each time, up to four. I think we have to take a full group of four as well. All right, well, uh, let's see. An adventurer who's kind and funny would be very good. Let's go with uh, that plus the guidebook. This person might have good charisma, which is good for trade as well. So let's go with that. Amuses everyone around them with ease. Ah, good. That could be good for morale. It's going to be a good choice. So we can click on the thing at the bottom for additional information, or we could just pick on the uh, character, I guess. So let's go with Elsa. Second party member, a missionary, a farmer, or a banker. A banker would give us 50 extra bucks. He's also pessimistic and pugnacious. Optimistic and wily. Charming and religious. Let's go with Jacob. Chronic liar. Uh-oh. And number three, a banker, a missionary, or a missionary. Well, we'll go with the banker then. Levi. Egotistical and slack. I'm willing to put in the effort necessary for success. I suppose. And a missionary, a missionary, or a missionary. Oh, so challenging, this choice. Heroic and funny. I think James would be fantastic. Let's go with him. Now, of course, you can read a lot more into these, and they certainly do matter, but your skills can also increase on the a trail by finding books and other things to actually uh, get their bonuses and other things up a little bit. All right, name your party. So in this case, we can name everybody whatever we'd like, but I think um, Eliza, Jacob, Levi, and James will be just fine. I do wish there was some sort of a character creation. That's the only thing. I'd love to pick a portrait and be able to maybe dress them differently and um, change some things about them or just have random stuff, but it works. Matt's General Store. Not sure what to buy. This kid is perfect for greenhorns just settling out on their journey. Or setting out on their first journey, let's say. If you prefer, you can start from scratch and choose your own supplies. Well, for brevity, let's just go ahead and pick the $432 pack. And this is what they recommend to begin with. So we'll go with that. All right, so we have six fifty. Uh, let's keep shopping. Let's see if we can buy a different wagon too. Uh, Five hundred. That is definitely the wagon we want to upgrade to eventually. But this mid-tier wagon is good. So let's go with this one right now. And of course, we can always trade with the money that we have at a large, um, like trade station in front of us. So money is not always everything, but trade is important too. So let's chat with some people. So here we can interact with a lot of different people who will give us tips on uh, how to survive, or in this case of Douglas, a quest where he wants us to go and, I believe, um, speak with somebody who, yeah, Ava, who he met here in Independence but has long gone. So he wants us to find her somewhere on the trail. We'll go ahead and agree to assist on that. Of course, some bonuses for completing those side quests. People find out about your good deeds and will reward you or... Uh, help you, you know, if, if you help them and they somehow uh, find you when you're downtrodden, they could give you a bunch of supplies after you help them out. If they get a broken wheel or something and you're broken down, they can come by and fix it and give you some food. Who knows? Oh, no. We have to go talk with Moses Harris again. Or at least they recommend it. There's a lot of things that we can ask here, but a lot of it is lore that just kind of pertains to the Oregon Trail itself. But I want to see the Oregon Trail, so let's go and uh, first jump back real quick and see if we can trade and find out who might have good bartering skills. So this will be a good opportunity, regardless of whether or not we want to buy this stuff, to find out who might have very good uh, haggling skills. So let's go ahead and start with who we suspected to be our best haggler, which was Eliza. Ooh, five. Not bad. 
Yeah, that seems fair. Good, so now we get a much better price. So we can trade nine clothes for three coffee, which is good, but the price is still too high. My opinion. Alright, we could also buy some flour. Go ahead and have somebody else chat. Let's go with Jacob. Only three. And really, your start at independence is not everything. You can really just kind of goof around for a little while. Let's go with Levi and find out his bartering skills. Ah, six. Levi's even better. All right, good. So now we have an even better price. We can buy a guidebook for medicine, clothes, bullets, or flour. I think we'll trade the bullets. We start with 50, and that's quite a lot of ammunition. All right, let's go ahead and try to offer... A price on the toolboxes, which will be important. Wow. I've never seen a uh, a six actually fail before. That's the maximum number. I didn't even know that was possible. The more you know, I guess. All right, let's go to... Uh, I guess let's just get out of here. Anything else is just per pertinent to lore and uh, doing a few other things. Also, money is for what they mentioned before... Going to the barber, which increases our hygiene. A physician to increase health. Blacksmith for wagon conditions. That's really only good for if you're, like, absolutely desperate and you're out of the materials to actually do those things, like clothing or repair parts. Let's get out of here. Let's go. We're on the Oregon Trail, finally. Ah, it's beautiful, man. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, so our first destination is the Kansas River Crossing. Then we need to cross the Big Blue River, and then to the Alcove Springs, where then our final destination for the first leg through the Great Plains is Fort Kearney. So, interesting that we actually have to do this five times, and I, I've only got, so far I've only gotten like one of the legs done in about four hours, so there's some heft and some beef here. Kansas River Crossing, a popular river crossing, that the first challenge for any westward, westward bound party. Pelts can be useful for sealing the wagon before crossing. Distance is 78 miles. If we avoid contracting dysentery, we'll be rewarded a harmonica, and successfully crossing the river will give us 50 coin. Travel. Oh, the exciting river crossings. Very nice. All right, let's go ahead and use some of our items before we leave. I think we did find out that we have two guidebooks and a hymn book, which will increase our composure. Let's go ahead and find out what everybody's got for that. Well, undiscovered, so let's start with maybe one of the... Uh, well, let's start with James. He is our re religious man, so let's see. Oh, he had no composure at all. I think that helps them to collect their thoughts in uh, stressful situations. Let's try Jacob. Jacob's a level two. We'll give him both the books then. And that'll help us to see ahead on the uh, trail as well. So that's pretty good. That'll let us help... Uh, to make decisions. Sometimes these will be question marks. Sometimes it'll indicate whether there's hunting ground or grazing area for the oxen. So that's good. Let's go to the bottom, middle, and then back to the river. Let's go just two days. Not a long trip, but a trip indeed. As morning breaks in Independence, our intrepid tra travelers take their first steps in the Oregon Trail. Oh, yeah. You know, the only other game I saw that was like this, too, was a game called The Organ Trail, which looked like it was the Apple II version uh, and had something to do with zombies or something? I don't know. Oh, but a formula like this, I think I've seen it before as well, uh, where there's one where you're dra traveling in a car and in between there's, like, turn-based tactical sections where you have to go into areas to get fuel and batteries and food and things like that. So interesting to see how many games The Organ Trail is actually inspired. Spirits are high. Everyone is in peak physical condition, the wagon is stocked, and the party is filled with vim and vigor. And everybody watching has subscribed. The party has made sure that they've turned on the notification bell, they've smashed the like button, they've left a comment to where they're watching from down below, and they've even considered clicking and tapping join and becoming a member today. Wow, what a great party. Amazing. 74 miles to go. Amen, brother. Now, as we're waiting, we can look around and see if there's any animals out there. So we can click on any sort of squirrel or whatnot. And in this case, some possibly dangerous mushrooms. Levi spies a cluster of mushrooms protruding from the dust of the trail side. The mushrooms are a vibrant yellow with a strange funnel-like shape that curves at the edges like a flower. 
They give off a scent of apricots. They might be edible. I do believe these are edible, too. I think they're called chanterelles. Is that correct? Go ahead and inspect. Uh, the one who inspects the mushrooms should have a keen eye and a knowledge of the nat natural world. Eh, was it Levi who said something? Let's check. Hmm. Oh, he got, he got a little dirty from bending down to pick up those mushrooms. Levi is unsure of exactly what the mushrooms are, but decides that they're probably dangerous. Suggests leaving them behind. Okay. Not bad for a tier one, though. He only had the level one skill, and that actually was a good thing. Uh, excuse me? Person who just fell from the sky? The party is at a complete loss for words. It's not every day that a man falls from the sky. Regardless, the responsible thing to do might be to offer some assistance. Assuming he survived the fall. Sir, are you okay? Cons aren't at all. Looks like I've run out of steam again. I knew these engines were nothing but trouble. Strange man, strange man dusts himself off. Excuse me. Where are my manners? My name is Samuel Peppard, and I thank you kindly for your help just now. What you just witnessed was my latest invention, a flying machine. Though I admit it's something of a work in progress. All that's missing is the right source of power, steam engines. Modern though they may be, they are simply not up to the task. Samuel Peppard strokes his chin in thought. You're quite right to be impressed. I've studied the work of Sir George Haley, an English inventor who has already built a working heavier than air glider. It's only a matter of time before humanity achieves the dream of powered flight. My dream is that an American will be the first to make such a flight. Indeed, if the winds are favorable, I see no reason why it shouldn't be me. Samuel Pepper looks very excited. It was a pleasure to meet you. Perhaps we'll see each other again. After all, who knows what the future holds? I shall endeavor to spy on you from above. It'll be important later, just for fun. Oh, we got a broken down wagon. Oh no, it's a camp for the night. People to possibly have some food with. Campsite, cook. The pleasant scent of frying garlic and onion reaches the party long before the light of the cooking fires. The campsite seems to be equipped with all the facilities necessary to prepare a dinner to restore health. So if we read about camping, we can find out that we can regain stamina, health, Morale and hygiene at three or four different types of camps. So there can be some for partying and some for resting, and they'll give us all sorts of bonus. So in this case, it's to regain health. But one more important thing is telling stories, and that's what we're going to do here. Let's go ahead and set up camp. And not to mention our, camp, our uh, people can rest, and so that's a good thing too. Let's tell stories so we can unlock more of our skills, find out what we have inside of us. Oh, there we go. We found some good numbers there. Alright. A little loss of motivation, but that's okay. The party spends the night talking amongst themselves, learning more about each other's skills. Alright, let's go to the center. Travel here. Not so bad so far. Keep on trucking. Levi lets out a cry of pain and clutches his leg. Unable to move, it appears he has a cramp from overexertion. A rest might ease the suffering. Hurrying along might invite worse injury. What should we do? Go ahead and stop. Let's get some buffalo wings, though. There we go. All right, let's stop at this buffalo wild wings and chill out. The party pauses to give Levi some time to recover. After some time, the pain in Levi's leg ab uh, abates, and he feels well enough to continue walking. And there we go. Oh, more buffalo. Nice. You know, they blend in. All the creatures and stuff that you can click on blend in so well. I, I miss them even when I'm looking at them. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I could click on those. Like, I It's pretty impressive how well the world blends together. Fish team in the water... Uh, nearby a prime location to cast a line and try to catch a bite though bait is required the party could craft some the party has zero bait well, let's see if we can get some 
Now you can buy that at the convenience stores or the general stores and also buy that from people too. With a little time, the party crafts some bait from suitable food the party has in storage. Fish bait can be created from spare fish and foodstuffs. The party has zero fish and zero pounds of foodstuffs. <laughs> oh no. That's interesting. We actually don't have any sort of... Um... Well, we have food, but they mentioned foodstuffs. Do they re are they referring to... Uh... Oh, must be something entirely different. I thought that we could dig up worms, but I guess I was wrong. So, no fishing for us today. I guess we'll have to push on. But here's the information about fishing. And, of course, there are also trophy fish, too. So there's ways that we can sell tons of fish to the people and haggle for a much higher price. We can go from a dollar a fish to, like, two dollars a fish. And when you've got, like, 50 fish, you can almost get all the money you need to buy the new wagon just from fishing alone. As long as you find a good buyer. So, pretty amazing. Let's get out of here, though. We're all good. Keep on trucking. All right, about 15 minutes or miles to the first uh, river crossing. Feels like 15 minutes. Jeez. People are slow. Why didn't they take a car or a plane? These guys were really dedicated to cosplay, that's all. Look at the sun going down. That's so pretty. While gathering water at the, for the camp, Jacob finds some turtle eggs buried on the bank of a nearby waterway. The eggs might be gathered and cooked for food, though some in the party might find such an act unsavory what should be done leave the turtle eggs alone well the extra food would be useful it's not worth destroying a clutch of eggs i agree we could have gotten a pet turtle though if one of them hatched and if we lived long enough to discover uranium we could have had teenage mutant ninja turtles turtles in a half shell turtle power greetings immigrants welcome to the kansas river how you choose to cross the first is the first real test of the trail now, don't even think about fording any river deeper than the wagon bed. About two and a half feet, or you'll swamp your wagon and lose your supplies. Right, so we can only cross rivers that are two and a half feet or less, and even that's risky. Uh, risky. Risking it for a biscuit. You can caulk the wagon bed and float it, or be smart and hire me to take your wagon on my ferry. Why not have a look around before you decide? You can talk to me at any time you want to hear about the crossing options again. All right, so we can trade with locals and see if we can get some pelts. Um, I have already crossed this river before by fording it, and you can definitely do that. But I'd like to see how the animation for the ferry works, so we'll be choosing the ferry today no matter the outcome. Let's go ahead and trade supplies. Now we have somebody here offering pelts. That's always useful. Let's go for a haggle with Levi. Success! All right, let's trade 20 bullets. The pelts will be very valuable. Looks like uh, somebody's offering 82 flour. That seems like a good one. Let's haggle. Oh, a, a failure. Wow. I've never seen that before. Now she wants three clothes for 82 flour. I think we should take that. All right, we can also get toolboxes from James. Let's haggle. Okay, and now we can trade uh, a clothing or flower. Let's trade the flower. We can get much more of that pretty easily. And coffee. Haggle with Levi. Ah, we have nothing, though, that we can trade, unfortunately. Super expensive for coffee. Nine clothes, 15 toolboxes, four medicine, or 45 bullets. Those are insane amounts of very rare materials. Wow. All right. So, one cool thing about the river is that we can actually wait here, and we can take a little bit of information about the river. So what's it going to be? How will you cross? So the current is slow. The depth is 2.1 feet. The width is 600 feet. Wagon condition is 100%, and chance of success is unknown, since we could also choose to hawk the wagon before going across. We'll use the ferry again in this case. I would like to see the animation, but we can learn a little bit more about the river and uh, our success chances by kind of considering the depth and the current. Those are going to be the most important parts. If, the, if it's too deep, you'll have to probably hawk your wagon or take a ferry, 
And if it's uh, currents very fast, you probably want to avoid fording the river. Uh, if you do rest, that will increase the uh, conditions to a better condition. So, like, things like slow and steady are probably okay, but anything like rapids or rough you want to avoid. Let's use the ferry. Actually, wait, one last thing. Let's see if there's anybody to talk with. Albert, Amy, the ferry operator. Let's talk with this guy. I believe he's from Canada. Let's go ahead and chat with him. Oh, yeah, we're originally from Canada, him and his wife. We moved back down this way uh, with my father and established a ferry back in 43 and helping folks across the Kansas River ever since. Been married a few years now to my wife, Josette. She knows these parts well. All right, well, let's go ahead and get across the river. Let's go back to cross on the ferry. So that'll be $5 per person and a head of oxen. Oh, and there's a bit of a wait. Wow. And wow, look at that. Three days to... Okay, never mind. I'm going to go ahead and take that back. So it's five per person plus oxen. That's a scam. Wow. Well, never mind. We'll be going ahead and fording that river. Goodbye, sir. All right, now we can seal the wagon. Let's use all of our pelts that we have. 90% chance. That's a pretty good chance. Let's forward. All right, without further delay, the party fastens down their supplies, prepare to enter the cold water, careful not to get swept away in the current. Still a chance to fail. And... We're going to make it. Hey, we did it. The party scrambles up the muddy bank and returns to the trail. Were you nervous? I, I was nervous. I honestly think it was going to go uh, belly up like our wagon. Well, it could have, but it didn't. So good for us. All right. So the next uh, part of the leg is Blue, Big Blue River Crossing and then the Alcove Springs. So after Big Blue, it gets much easier for now. This is the last big obstacle until we're onto the springs. Uh, derived from the Kansas people's name, Great Blue Earth River, it's a significant ford for any wagon party. Oh, not too far. Uh, just two days to cross. I guess we'll go... Well, let's go north. With Kansas River crossing behind them, the party looks ahead with some trepidation. They only hope trials uh, to come aren't as treacherous. We'll see. All right, let's... Oh, what the hell? What was that? A terrible bang echoes from within the wagon, and James cries out in pain. Damn, a, a rifle round went off? It seems improperly stowed rifle has misfired with James, the unlucky target. Oh, boy. Well, let's get you a Band-Aid, James. Ah, who's going to give him the medical treatment now? Let's do... Eliza. All right, well, she's a little dirty, but... The bullet hit James in his arm, but passed through cleanly. Also provides some medicine and bandages the wound tightly. Unfortunately, the bandages can barely stem the flow of blood. James will need further medical attention, or perhaps a miracle. Uh-oh. James has a gunshot wound. Uh-oh. This is bad. Oh, this is bad. The wagon is wearing out. Oh, it's already going bad. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's repack the wagon. All right, everybody calm down. The wagon sustained a little damage. Let's repair. Okay. That part's all right. Okay, next thing is we need to maybe... I think we could, we should keep it our same pace, but let's increase the amount of food. We need to get there. We're going to need a doctor, so this is this is bad. Now it looks like we can get 100 pounds of meat collected and three pelts collected. We'll get medicine and coffee if we do those side quests, kind of. Oh, yes. I forgot we need to pack the food in. So we'll do that like that. Uh, toolboxes we can stack to five. 
I'm uh, sorry, three. So the total of five there can go right on down there. Luckily, we have more medicine. All right, that's more tidy, isn't it? Can we use that on James? Again. He has a gunshot wound for eight days. Oof. And we won't be able to get his health back up until we go to a doctor. So we're going to need money as well. So he's got a permanent debuff to four. Oh, no. The wagon's back wheel catches in one of the trail's myriad ruts. It sticks. It jams fast. And it'll move no further. Oh, come on. As things stand, pushing the wagon free will strain the party, or worse. One might unpack its cargo to lighten it first, which would be tolerably safer, but more cargo is unloaded the longer the process will take. What should they do? Bunnies. Uh, let's unpack some. With the wagon bed lightened, the party pushes as the oxen pull. In time, the wagon rolls free. The cargo is repacked and the wagon continues its journey towards the Big Blue River. Damn, this is a much more challenging run than my first time. The first time it was just like uh, sunshines, lollipops, and rainbows. And this time it's just like gunshots um, <laughs> and uh, dysentery and cholera. The party approaches a dilapidated, windblown wagon. While the long-abandoned wagon looks as if it might collapse at any moment, some parts may be salvageable. The wagon wobbles precariously. It may be possible to retrieve useful materials, but each attempt comes with the risk of the wagon collapsing. Take a wheel, tongue, or the axle. Um, boy. You know, I think the most expensive thing is the axle. Let's take that. We should retrieve the axle. Oh, we know nothing of anybody's carpentry skills. Let's do Jacob. Wow, he succeeded. The axles wrestled from the wagon's husk with some effort. Without the axle to lean on, the front of the wagon uh, shifts forward slightly. Let's take the tongue now. Or maybe a spare wheel. Box. Let's take a wheel. And let's have James do it. No, Levi. As Levi moves to retrieve the item, the wagon finally gives way to the intrusion. It's decrepit shell splintering into dust. There's nothing left to take. Badge. On we go. We gotta make it to Big Blue. Buffalo. Bison spotted. Levi is exhausted. A labyrinth of wheel ruts crisscrosses this stretch of trail carved into the earth by wagons past and rendered permanent over the years of wind and rain. Walking quickly becomes a chore. The party struggles to keep their footing and must expand more effort to guide the wagon onward. Oh boy. We need to keep trucking. This is this is bad luck time. We got Levi and Jacob exhausted. We need coffee. Let's go ahead and take some emergency coffee right now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, there's our axle, which is going to be very expensive, but a good item. We can always sell it too. Let's lighten our food usage a little bit. And we'll keep it at our strenuous pace. Oh boy. The roaring of a fast-flowing river can be heard ahead, long before it comes into view. This is the Big Blue River, an infam infamously difficult crossing. Well, this is going to be a challenge. Let's see. Big Louie, party leader, Laura are all here. More lore. Oh, we could sell pelts, but we want pelts so we can try to get across. 
And let's haggle with Levi. Oh, unfortunate. We really needed that. We needed a break, Martha. All right, I will trade you a medicine for that. Actually, too close. Do toolboxes or wagon grease? Wagon grease is going to be incredibly expensive. The ox we can't get unless we have a wagon that can pull four. This will pull three. We can't bring extras with us. And maybe toolboxes, to which I will haggle for bullets. Since we can't hunt anywhere, we got to wait till hunting grounds. It's not as useful as you'd think, unfortunately. Let's trade six bullets. Back we go. All right, let's go ahead and get ready to cross. We've got ourselves a moderate current. We must make the best preparations if we have any chance of crossing. Oh, God, it's eight feet deep. Oh, uh, boy. Now, I believe here the current doesn't get any better than this. Uh, better than moderate would be slow. And I really don't think we're going to get that, so... Uh, just like James, let's bite the bullet. Sorry, James. We're going to cock the wagon. Go ahead and use three pelts. We can do it again. Oh, boy. All right, roll them dice. Let's go. Party prepares the wagon, removing the wheels and making the bed watertight. Oh, baby. Wow, it's beautiful. Uh-oh. Wow, we did it. Despite the wagon not being completely sealed, the party manages to cross the river without their supplies suffering any water damage. As a result, born purely of luck, perhaps some, <laughs> sometimes that's exactly what one needs to survive the trail. A few things have gone bad, though. All right, on to Alcove Springs. Very nice. All right, so when we get to Alcove Springs, we'll continue on with some of the story for the people we met at Independence, such as Ava, and we'll also see ourselves uh, our friend again from the sky very soon. The uh, man who fell out of the sky. Once we get to Fort Kearney, we can also trade things with uh, money and also try to get some of those services. A doctor for our good friend who has been wounded uh, from the gunshot. So, yeah, this is only like a small leg of the race. And, uh, yeah, one of five, we've already suffered this much damage. Whew. I don't know what to make of it. It's going to be bad. Anyway, if you want to see more Oregon Trail here on the channel, I'd love to make this a series and continue on with this particular uh, episode and so let's go ahead and smash the like button let's get her up well past 1000 let me know where you're watching from across the u.s or the world and thank you very much for also saying glory to raptoria down below in the comment section hope to see you all soon thank you very much for watching i can't believe it the og survival game oregon trail is back and it's on steam it's better than ever better than i remember easier at least no it's more hard i'll see you soon bye